We got kind of a rainy fall day going here with the rain coming down not very heavily at all so I'm going to tough it out here see if I can get this in. This is a video about staying back. When I was a kid long long time ago and even before I was born coaches were telling their understudies stay back you know the coach behind the batting cage the third base coach shouting to the hitter stay back and it's one of those baseball nuggets of wisdom that can be interpreted differently in different situations, I think. Because when I was growing up, everyone was doing the Ted Williams rotational thing, which is still part of the game where you, you load like that. And that if you come too far forward, you're not going to be able to drive the ball effectively. Usually it happens on a changeup and the bat slides out of your top hand. So you're supposed to stay back like that and kind of dip your back knee. I don't like this because it makes the bat go down and kind of sweep under the ball, which is likely to, okay, you backspin it, but you may backspin it too much and pop it up. And, you know, that's what small ball success is all about. If you're not a big tall guy and you strike the ball that way and lots of backspin, it's probably just a medium deep fly ball. Only the big guys can get away with that and hit it over a fence from time to time. So we're not really after that, but that's what staying back will do for you in the, the mid-50s golden age swing. Uh, even today, a lot of guys will just, uh, I think Aaron Judge is like this, Ian Kinsler is like this. You see guys just basically kind of fall back on their back knee. And they're, they're certainly staying back, you know. They're just... And they'll, they'll have their share of home runs because they are backspinning the ball. And the thing about that swing is that it's, it's quick to the ball. It isn't necessarily accurate to the center of the ball, but there's not much you have to do with your lower body, is there? You just fall on that back knee. Uh, I wanted to talk about this subject specifically in the context of small ball success and are trying to revive the dead ball era swing because I've noticed that in my videos I do tend to come forward more than I wish I had. I think part of this is because I'm kind of doing the swing at three quarters speed. Sometimes I'm really not loosened up that much. I don't mean to be, you know, falling on my face. When I do that old school swing with the pump of the bat head, I should be swinging more like that. And coming more upright. But a lot of times when I look at these videos, I'm ending up like that. Interesting thing though is that if you look at can't find videos so easily of hitters even from the 30s, certainly from the teens and the dead ball era, it's almost impossible. But if you look at still photographs of them, uh, you can actually find them finishing their swing like that. They've, they've come too far forward, but they've still often, they've made good contact. And so staying back is not necessarily something that they want to do. If you have to go forward in order to reach the ball and drive it, then uh, who cares if you end up producing a finish that can be framed and hung in the Louvre, or if it looks kind of ugly. It, hey, you just want to get the job done, right? So with an old school swing, you have that kind of flexibility. You, you would like to, you know, to be more like that, just straight up when you hit the ball, but say that you're a little bit early on the ball. So because your weight is shifting 100% forward, you can 
cheat a little bit farther forward and you may end up looking like you're going to fall on your face. But you see, we're working on a bat path. Uh, the barrel's going to the ball in a straight line at a slightly downward angle. And because of that line, because this is a very linear swing, we can continue forward and the line continues to be drawn by the barrel. Uh, a lot of times, of course, pitches that you're early on are going to be dipping. So even though the line is going down somewhat, it could be going right into the heart of the ball. You're going to catch that change up of that breaking ball and probably pull it and get an effective hit as opposed to when you're with the Ted Williams swing or the Aaron Judge swing if you this is because of my age this is more Ted Williams but even here if you stay back and it's a breaking ball you probably missed it entirely or you're weakly top spinning it you're gonna get a miserable little ground ball so first thing is uh, yeah some of my video representations and these things are not real nice to look at I'm going too far forward uh, and I notice that when I'm hitting live pitching and filming it I do uh, especially when I'm trying to hit a fastball I would uh, almost say I'm, I'm kind of fighting it off but I am getting my weight shifted forward let's do the the speaker swing that I like let's say that I do this on a fast one I, I kind of have to stay back. I'm, I'm almost falling back a little bit because the ball is coming in on me so fast. Uh, again, because of the extreme adjustability of the swing, though, because my weight is going forward, if I suddenly realize, whoops, I'm getting there too early, now my weight continues forward and I get that kind of ugly forward leaning finish, but uh, it may still get some really good contact. So that's the first thing I wanted to clarify. Sometimes my modeling of this swing, it, it doesn't have the kind of perfect pleasing finish that I would like it to have, but it can still be effective. That's, that's really the second point, that you can get out in front of the ball a little bit uh, with this swing and still have an effective result. I don't think that um, I don't think you can do that with the other the, the more typical mainstream swing. I think if you you know they coaches also tell you to uh, let the ball get deep to let it travel and uh, sure if you stay back if you let it travel and you also, stay back. You could get it right here and happy days. You got a good result. But that's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? How do you let it travel? When, you know, you're geared up for a fastball and then it's an off-speed pitch and something in you is supposed to say, oh, it's an off-speed pitch, let's let it travel. It, it doesn't, there's not enough time for your mind to have this conversation. Uh, the fact is that you're probably, your barrel's going to start sweeping up and you're going to top the ball. And again, and that's, that's my second point, and I'll just finish by emphasizing that. With the old school swing, you can be a little bit too early, and because your weight is carrying forward, the line is still descending into the ball, and you get a good result. I love that about this swing. I mean... <laughs> Explain to me why these guys who lived 100 years ago were striking out once every 20 at bats. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Sewell, who, well, Speaker had some incredible seasons too, where he struck out about 20 times in 600 at bats. It's ridiculous. How did they do that? Well, it, it has to be in the swing, right? It was something they were doing. It's not because the pitchers were throwing that much slower. I mean, slower speeds actually often produces more misses. Also, they, uh, you know, they were throwing spit balls and shine balls and scuff balls and all kinds of balls that darted all over the place. There was a background, uh, terrible hitting background. A lot of times you just had a sea of white shirts out there. 
um, the reaction time that the hitter had to contact the pitch was really uh, probably as narrow, a small a window as hitters who were hitting today off of Aroldis Chapman. Um, and hitters back then were actually, we forget this too often, but they were going forward in the box, sometimes even kind of running up to get to the ball before it would break. So they were subtracting a couple of feet from the 60 feet, six inches. These guys, all of this stuff is going on, and these guys were still striking out once a week. You know, how is, it, how is that possible? How was that happening? It, it must have been something in the swing. And I think what I talked about today, uh, I'm not knocking staying back. It, it, it's good to stay back, but with this swing, if you get lured into going farther forward, you still have a good chance of a positive result.